Right now, I'm standing in front of the Mexican Canyon Trestle Bridge. It's an old railway bridge, but you might be asking yourself, why am I here? Well, I was just curious to see what it would look like in person. But what drives that curiosity? I mean, curiosity is the whole point of this channel, isn't it? Curiosity is why you clicked on this video, after all. <laughs> London dropped its dignity. Yeah. So has France and Germany. Yeah. All hands are dancing to a raggedy melody full of originality. Sing it, so. The folk who live in sunny Spain give it up, give it up. dance to a strain yeah. they call the Spanish tango. Give it. Dukes and lords and Russian czars, men who own their This railway trestle bridge would be built in 1899 and would be part of something called the Cloud Climbing Railway, which was said to be the best railway in the West. It was part of a larger system called the Sacramento and Almogordo Railway. It connected to a larger railway that went all the way to El Paso. The bridge was designed by Horace A. Sunmer who had designed many trestle bridges throughout Colorado. Although used by the logging industry, the primary use of the railway was to take people out of the desert heat and into the cool mountains around Cloudcroft and Rio Doso. Now a tourist attraction, it was falling apart until a restoration effort happened from 2008 to 2010. But there is more to the story of this bridge than just its history. Like why this small trestle bridge is so interesting in the first place. Coyote came walking along, scrounging as usual. He met a rabbit who was carrying a leather pouch. Hello, how do you fare? asked the coyote. I, I fare well, said the rabbit. The coyote wanted to know what was in the pouch. He began to guess. Oh, you have tobacco. Give it here. I'd like to smoke some. You have more than you need for your small size. But the rabbit did not answer. He simply walked on. The coyote pestered him until finally he answered. What I have in my bag is nothing you'd want. Well, let me see that nothing, the coyote demanded. No, the rabbit replied. In a fit of rage, the coyote tore open the bag, revealing it to be full of fleas. They covered the coyote, and he ran off screaming and itching. I told you so, the rabbit yelled. What you just heard is an abbreviated version of an old Lakota tale. Now, there are many different versions of this tale all throughout history, from Pandora's box in Greek mythology to the old phrase, curiosity killed the cat. Now, these stories warn of the dangers of curiosity, but is it fair to say that curiosity is always dangerous? Well, yeah, it can be, but isn't it natural? According to astrophysicist Mario Levio, it is. See, humans have what's called neoteny, which is the, our ability to retain childlike features as we grow older. As children, 
All people want to do is explore and learn about the world around them. That childlike sense of wonder never leaves your mind. It means that we are always learning and growing. Scientifically, there are two types of curiosity, perceptual and epistemic. Perceptual curiosity is like uncovering something that challenges what you thought was true. Maybe you think you're alone in a dark house and all of a sudden you hear a creak or a crack that startles you and fills you with uneasy curiosity. Epistemic is a little more fun. That's the stuff you want to learn about, the things you go out of your way to explore, like abandoned ruins or watching this video. In this case, you normally feel rewarded for your curiosity. Curiosity helps us with survival as well. We needed to know what hurt us and what didn't when we were just barely starting to migrate across the world. As people grew and began to develop culture, they started testing out new things. Now curiosity has a different connotation. It is more related to simply learning new things rather than survival itself. But even in today's world, your curiosity can save you by teaching you important things. Have you ever touched a hot stove before? I did when I was about five or six years old. I learned real quick that the stove is hot and not to touch hot surfaces. My sister learned a similar lesson when she put a metal fork in the microwave trying to heat up day old soup and almost burnt her house down. But the purpose of this video isn't really to discuss the scientific aspect of curiosity. Some people have asked me why I explore abandoned buildings or why I even bother to make videos at all. But it all has to do with curiosity and our desire to learn. Humans have an everlasting desire to acquire more knowledge, and I'd argue that nothing is more important than that. And that desire to acquire more knowledge is what brought you to this video after all. The old saying goes that the pen is mightier than the sword. And I do believe that peace between anyone can only come through an understanding of each other. Each other's culture, each other's different point of views, and that kind of thing can only come through gaining knowledge. Your curiosity about another country or another group of people or even history is all it takes to really make a difference in the world. This video is a little different than what you'd come expect from the channel. However, I thought it would be a really interesting topic to dive into, and it was a good excuse for our little hike. Building houses up out of wood. Running cables up to the sun Building wreckage, this isn't fun Do I know what fun is? Do I even know? Would I know it if I saw it? Recognize its glow Say cheese. Yeah, say cheese. The picture doesn't work if you don't say cheese. Jesus.